How many Eagle Eye riders are in the audience out there? And last week's video I was wearing something new when I was demoing the trail braking, and very few of you spotted it. And this week I want to talk about it. Hey, my name's Kevin, and I release a weekly video here on MC Rider focused on road skills or road strategy to help make you a better rider. At the end of this video, head over to mcrider.com or just type MC Rider in the search bar on YouTube and you can watch every MC Rider video ever released. So I know last week when I was out riding on the parking lot, I didn't give you a really close-up view of me riding, so the drone wasn't really close, but I was working on my trail braking skills and I had something new on. But when I was out on the parking lot, let me give you a little background information, it was 96 degrees it was in the middle of the day, and that probably meant that that parking lot temperature was well over 100 degrees. And even if you're moving, that's a pretty hot temperature to ride in. It's even worse when you never get over 30 miles per hour like I was in the parking lot. And even when you get up to around 30 miles per hour, it's only at very short stretches. So you don't really have a chance to get that wind going to cool off. I was out on that lot for about an hour to get the footage that I shared with you last week. And even though it was really hot outside, I never really felt heat at all. So let me get a little bit closer shot of you on the drone so you can see where I'm going here and how I stayed cool under those conditions. So what you see on my back there is a cooling backpack from a company called Cycle Chillers. And if you have to ride in the heat, or for that matter, do anything in the heat, this could possibly change it forever for you. It's made a huge difference for me. So for full disclosure here, I was sent the Solo product last year. So let me show you the Solo product. So the, this is what Cycle Chillers calls the Solo, and it's more of a cooler type uh, thing that you put on the back of the motorcycle. So this uh, straps to the back of the motorcycle. I did a video on heat last year where I talked about the solo version of this, and I really liked it. The problem is you're tethered to the motorcycle when you're choosing this option, even though it does give you longer cooling. But Cycle Chillers has recently released a backpack version of this, and I was so impressed with the solo version of it that I purchased the backpack with my own money. So Cycle Chillers now has two different primary products in their lineup, the backpack and the Solo. They also have something they call the Tandem, which is a dual rider setup. It's basically the uh, cooler version that I showed you before, but it has two outlets on it and runs two vests at the same time. So you can do a rider and passenger with the Tandem version. When I used to work for a major airline in the IT department, I commuted back and forth to work on a motorcycle pretty much all year long. In the winter, it was cold, but I could add heated gear, and I rode in relative comfort with that heated gear on. The heat was different, though, in the summertime. I had limited success with a mesh jacket and using an evaporative cooler cooling vest under that jacket, so one of those that you heat up or you excuse me, you soak down in the sink prior to getting on the motorcycle. And as long as you were moving, that was okay. But stop and go traffic like we have here in DFW or stopping at red lights, you're getting pretty heated. And I found that that was only good for about 45 minutes. But the Cycle Chillers backpack works equally well in stop and go traffic, sitting at red lights or filling the motorcycle up with gas. Everything is self-contained in the backpack, and trust me, it works. What makes the Cycle Chiller backpack work is the ice and circulating ice-cold water around your entire torso. So in the Solo, you get the cooler, uh, and you fill that area with enough ice and water so that it can circulate through the vest. Then you strap the cooler to the back of the motorcycle and attach the quick connect hose to the vest and off you go. And this works good for longer days on the motorcycle when you have a motorcycle that has a capacity to carry a cooler. So it might be a bit of a challenge for you guys on the smaller bikes or the sport bikes because they don't really have a good place to strap something that big down. I think it works well for the touring rider who'll be riding in the heat and spend a long time on the motorcycle. 
and the Solo can be powered by a rechargeable battery in the unit or directly off the motorcycle with the standard battery tender plug attached to the motorcycle. But the backpack version, let me grab this for you, it's totally self-contained. So here's the backpack, and what makes this work is this bladder that I've got here. You can see this one's frozen. I pulled this right out of my uh, freezer, and it's been here in the shop for about, I don't know, about an hour at this point. But you can see that it's still frozen solid. It holds three liters of ice, and it's got outlets on it uh, here and here. And that's what you connect to the vest, or what ultimately connects to the vest and allows the water to circulate through the vest. I'll show that vest to you here in a minute. But the whole thing is self-contained. So the, the ice goes in here, the pump and the battery are up there at the top of the backpack, and the whole set thing is self-contained here. And then you've got outlets. Where are my outlets at? right here with these quick connects that these connect from the backpack to the vest and that's what provides the cooling for you. So that bladder is best to freeze it overnight and then when you're ready to head out for the day you just put it in the backpack, add a little bit of water to it and you're ready to go. That lasts for about two hours. I was on that parking lot in 96 degrees. I was out there for a little over an hour and I had cooling the entire time. I went for about a 30 minute ride after that and I still had cooling the entire time I was riding. And that block ice will last longer as long as you're not circulating the, uh, as long as you don't have that pump on and you're circulating water through the vest. So I'll fill that thing up in the morning, uh, freeze it overnight rather and put it in the backpack in the morning and I can go out and ride till you know 10 or 11 o'clock and then when I get ready to cool down I can turn the pump on and I've still got ice in the backpack because that block ice frozen in that bladder when it's all zipped up in the backpack lasts for quite some time. So it works well you don't have to use it immediately you can get it all set up and then you can turn it on once the temperature outside heats up and you start needing some cooling at that point. So this is the vest that comes with it. Um, and what you can't see here is it's got these little tubes that run through here. It's kind of hard to see in that black background. I don't know if you can see it if I flip it around. But it's got tubes that run entirely through this vest and across the back and across the front. And when this whole thing is zipped up, then you've got water circulating, that ice cold water that's coming from the ice in the backpack, that's circulating through this vest the entire time, returns to the backpack, cools the water back off and begins that cycle all over again. And then the vest has these two quick connects and that connects to the bottom of the backpack where I showed you before. It's real easy, it just snaps in there pulls out whenever you're ready to disconnect it and get off the bike or get the backpack off of you. And that's what circulates that water through and it really makes a huge difference. Like I said, I was out on the parking lot, 96 degrees, not moving around a whole lot on the motorcycle and I stayed cool the entire time. And I feel pretty confident if you freeze that bladder overnight and you've got block ice in it, you can get about two hours, uh, maybe plus or minus a little bit of t cooling time out of that. And you can always refill that bladder as well. So let me pull the bladder back out. So here's the bladder. You can tell, man, this thing is still frozen solid uh, from coming out of my freezer. So it's gonna last a good while, uh, that block ice is, as long as you're not circulating the water over it. So you can load this up in the morning and start using it around noon uh, when you really need the cooling. But this slides off of the top, and if you've used all of the ice up in it, you can stop at any convenience store, pick up a bag of ice, and you can refill this thing out on the road. So you're not just stuck to that one cycle of cooling. You can buy a bag of ice for a 
couple of bucks at just about any 7-Eleven or, you know, quick stop. And then you've got further cooling to help get you further down the road. So I've used the solo version of this, both riding a motorcycle and mowing the grass. I mowed the grass the other day in the middle of the hottest part of the day. With that solo on, I had it, you know, on the floorboard of the mower, and I had a vest on and running the hose up that way, running it off the battery, the rechargeable battery in the system. And I stayed cool for three hours just using cubed ice from the freezer in the house. Now, it'll last a whole lot longer if you make your own block ice with some Tupperware or something and freeze that prior to the ride like you would with the backpack version. And I bet using that option, you get a whole lot more cooling time out of it that way. With the backpack, I got cooling for a little over two hours in 96 degree weather. After about two and a half hours, it was ready for an ice refill. But the huge benefit is that you can be on and off the motorcycle the whole time that you're using it. So for me, I rode to the parking lot to film for last week's video. I got off the motorcycle, set up cameras, checked the parking lot, got the drone in the air. I even tossed out a few cones, and I never took my riding jacket off. Never got hot and never even thought about the temperature because I had all the cooling I needed strapped to my back the entire time. So which one is best? Well, it depends on what type of riding you do. For longer stretches of road, I'd say the Solo works great if you have room on the motorcycle to strap the cooler down to the back seat. And it'll give you longer stretches of cooling so you'll be able to stay cool longer. But on the downside, you'll be tethered to the motorcycle with the breakaway quick connectors. But you'll have to hook them and unhook them each time you're on and off the motorcycle. Let me highlight that point real quick too. These quick connectors are designed so you may have reservations about strapping yourself or tethering yourself to the, the cooler on the back of your motorcycle. These are designed to break away. So in the event of a crash, these are going to break away and not pull you along with the motorcycle. I really like the backpack version, though. I think it's the best option for people who are commuting or going out for shorter rides, you know, two and a half hours or so. It offers a freedom to get on and off the motorcycle. It's all self-contained, and it's going to provide the same amount of cooling, just not for the same length of time that you would get off of the solo version. I like both options, but unless I was on a longer trip, I think I prefer the backpack version of this, especially when I'm filming videos for you guys. Man, this will be a game changer for me. In the past, I got up early and tried to do all that parking lot recording early in the day before it got really hot out. And I don't have to worry about that now as I can easily take AC with me when I'm out on the parking lot. The owner of Cycle Chillers is a fantastic guy. His name is Stu. He's a forum member here at the MC Rider Forums as well. He goes by the name of Old Levi on the forums. And if you're a forum member and have any questions, about either of these products and try to figure out which one is best for you. Stu's more than happy to answer questions there and help you get the right product. Hopefully Stu will be following the comments in this video as well and we'll be able to answer some questions for you there. So if you have any questions, make sure and leave that in the comments below. And until next week, guys, ride cool. This is Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.